When I first looked into 2.5 gigabit and 10 gigabit networking gear a few years ago, it was all generally used enterprise level gear that you had to get off websites like eBay. And it was generally in the $400 to $500 range starting with for this massive managed 1U rack mount switch unit, which was expected to be very power hungry, possibly noisy uh, due to its cooling fans and quite difficult to configure. But not anymore, what I have here is a MokerLink managed switch which comes with four 2.5 gigabit ports, one SFP plus 10 gigabit capable port and one RJ45 10 gigabit port. All of this for 100 bucks and pretty low power usage figure as we'll see next. But why would you need 10 gigabit Ethernet you might ask? Well, there might be different reasons people would want to upgrade, but I think one very common reason is the need for accessing a storage device like a NAS at high speeds. Personally, I recently upgraded to a Mac Mini M2 Pro as my work computer, and it only comes with 512 gigabits of built-in storage, so now I need a NAS to store all of my files, and I want to access that at high speeds over my local network. And full disclosure here, MokerLink did send this unit for free for the purpose of this review, but I am not paid by them in any way, and any opinions you will see shared in this video are completely mine. So I got my unit shipped from an Amazon warehouse in the EU, and inside the box we are greeted with the switch, which is this nice metallic enclosure. We also get a uh, power adapter, which is rated for 12 volts and 2 amps and this uh, quick start guide. As mentioned previously, the specs of the unit are four 2.5 gigabit ports, one SFP plus 10 gigabit capable, uh, which you can equip with a fiber or copper module, plus one RJ45 uh, for 10 gigabit. So you can have, for example, your NAS connected into a 10 gigabit, your main PC into the second 10 gigabit option, and the rest of your network sits over 2.5 gigabit. And this for me is the perfect combo. The case is this nice uh, metal construction with vents on the side. Feels pretty solid and uh, good quality. This is a completely passively cooled unit, which is very important for me. I don't want any uh, small screaming uh, cooling fan inside my Ethernet switch. There are a couple of uh, wall mounting screw points on the back and uh, this particular unit does not have any mounting holes or adapters. Uh, for installing inside a 1U rack. However, there are bigger models in their lineup which can be installed in racks and if you really need it, you can probably 3D print an adapter for this one as well. But generally speaking, this is a smaller model intended for the general purpose home user or small office that doesn't have a rack. Powering it up shows the power LED uh, blinking fast for a few seconds during its boot phase then uh, shows a slow blinking during operation and you have this little uh, switch on the front panel uh, which controls whether or not this switch operates in managed or an unmanaged mode but you do have to power cycle the unit when changing the setting to use it as a managed switch or access the web management interface you need the switch to be set to m which stands for managed and the default IP address of the switch is 192.168.2.1. So you'll have to set an IP address for your computer that is on the same subnet in order to access it. The default username and password is admin. And one thing to be aware is that some users have complained about another brand with a similar model switch potentially coming with a preset MAC address, which is the same for multiple units. So if you're planning on using more than one inside your network and you're having trouble, that's one thing I would check. Um, I don't think that's a problem with MokerLink units, it's just for the other brands that sell a similar model on AliExpress. For example, my MokerLink unit comes with this MAC address, I'm gonna print this on screen, and firmer version 1.8. It would be useful if you could drop a comment below to let me know if you own one of these and it happens to have the same MAC address. If that happens, there is an option to manually set the MAC address under the security menu. The web management interface, although it has been customized to have the SmokerLink logo at the top, it does show a lot like a generic Realtek um, GUI because as we will see in the teardown in a couple of minutes, this switch is based on a Realtek chipset and some users are reporting on the forums that there are apparently even hidden UI menus for changing the branding and default settings, uh, but I won't go into that as uh, it's not really something I'm interested in. 
Right at the top, you'll get a quick overview of the ports. Green means connected. Then there are plenty of settings that you might already be familiar with from managed switches. You can, for example, switch on or off individual ports or configure them for a certain speed. You can create VLANs, port isolation policies, and all of the usually managed switch options, which I, I won't be using personally because I'll let my router manage this, but it's there if you need it. And if, for example, you've opted for a, a PoE equipped model, you'll also have some settings for, the, for controlling the PoE. Under tools menu, you'll find the options to upgrade the firmware, save or restore your settings and reboot the device manually or program it to do so automatically at a certain time. In terms of power usage, the smoker link switch idles at about 1.9 watts with nothing connected to it, uh, but with a 10 gigabit link plus three 2.5 gigabit ports and no SFP module installed with the managed switch option turned on, the switch takes on average 6.8 watts. And it appears that the numbers go up or down with roughly 0.5 watts per each uh, additional 2.5 gigabit port connected. I know you're curious just as I am to see how this thing is built inside, so I'm gonna take it apart for our viewing pleasure and I expect some DC to DC converters on the uh, power input to step down the 12 volts to the voltages used by the uh, uh, ASIC. I expect a, you know, a big networking chipset from Realtek, maybe some form of interface chip for the 10 gigabit copper port, plus the usual supporting circuitry like magnetics for the RJ45 ports, but not much else because these days Ethernet switches are pretty integrated into a single ASIC. The build quality seems very good. I see good soldering, no bodges, and interestingly it says Hasivo on the PCB, which is likely the OEM for the switch. So Mokerlink probably doesn't build this on their own. They just have Hasivo built it and customize it for them. Here are the, uh, the expected DC to DC converters there are two of them stepping down the voltage from 12 volts to the lower voltages required to feed the chips there are some you know unpopulated uh, footprints in this area these may very well be related to the poe version which i think has this module that goes on top and connects to these um, unpopulated pin headers uh, through which they feed power to the rj45 jacks Blue heatsink on the main chipset under here, uh, the smaller black heatsink uh, on the copper RJ45 interface chip, uh, plus some very thick thermal pads on the back of the PCB. Uh, these are effectively helping to spread the, spread the heat away from uh, under the chips through the uh, metal enclosure. And uh, I'm going to try removing the main uh, blue heatsink because it has clips. I'm not gonna rip off the little black one because it's glued in. And under the blue heatsink I had to wipe off the thermal paste and we find the Realtek RTL 8372 which is a very common chipset. Uh, vast, a vast majority of switches with similar specs with four two and a half gigabit ports will be using. Other than that, there isn't much, you know, happening in here. Like I said, everything is contained pretty much in the Realtek chipset, which just, which just needs an external flash memory, which is going to be this guy here, uh, holding the settings and firmware, plus optionally a copper interface chip for the 10 gigabit link, uh, which is under the black heatsink. In terms of actual throughput, the guys from Serve the Home YouTube channel have done a much better job than I would do in testing the Hasivo version of the switch and for that matter any other RTL8372 based switch should perform very similar and they obtained roughly 26 to 20, 27 gigabits per second total throughput uh, for all ports accounted, which is not bad at all. This chip gets very close to the maximum theoretical throughput of 30 gigabits per second. One thing to note is that you might find, you know, a very similarly looking switch under a different brand, which internally may be built similarly or it may have differences. It will have the same chipset maybe, but other brands could very well be using lower quality um, supporting components. 
I do recommend going for the Moker Link unit over the other brands you might find on AliExpress, for example, because with Moker Link there are several advantages like the fact that they stock these in the US and EU Amazon warehouses. They come with FCC and CE markings, which might be a requirement depending on where you live. There is support and the possibility to return the unit easily if something is not right. Personally, I'm very happy with the build quality and performance of this MokerLink switch. I'm confident that it will serve my small lab without any issues for years to come and it will enable me to benefit from these high transfer speeds between my computer and a NAS storage server. I have placed several links in the description below to places where you can order the MokerLink unit and don't forget to check out their other models because they uh, do have quite a wide range including very similar or identical models with built-in PoE for just a small increase in cost so those might be a good option to consider if you're planning on powering stuff like a security camera or an access point over PoE. That was all for today I hope you enjoyed this video and it helps you if you're in the process of upgrading your network there will be more content on this topic coming up. I'll have to decide, for example, between a DIY NAS versus buying a ready-made unit. So make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content ahead. Thank you for joining me and I'll catch you in the next video.